everyone. Welcome to Underground Scholars Winter 21 podcast series, a podcast about elevating our formerly incarcerated and system impacted scholars stories. You'll get the chance to listen to our members and advocates supporting USI Three Pillars through recruitment, retention, and advocacy. My name is Marisa Lopez, but you can call me Ritz. I'll be your host for Winter 21 USI podcast series. In today's episode, you get the chance to hear one of our Underground Scholars member who's currently at UCLA. Her name is Jacqueline Rodriguez, a student parent at UCLA and is a College of San Mateo CSM Project Change alumni. Jacqueline graduated CSM magna cum laude with three AA degrees. She was on the Dean's List each semester, participated in CSM Honors Project, and was a student-led with Project Change. She also served a student ambassador from UC Berkeley's Underground Scholars Initiative for two years. Jacqueline was also a law facilitator and youth leader for nonprofit Fresh Line, Lifelines for Youth. So, I will let Jacqueline introduce herself and, you know, ask about what she's been up to through, through these virtual times. First of all, thank you so much for having me today. Um, it's a great pleasure always talking to you guys, always being able to share my story. So I'm very grateful to be in a position where I'm able to do that today. Um, so just a little background about myself. My name is Jacqueline Rodriguez. I currently transfer from College of San Mateo to UCLA. Um, so I'm a first year transfer student, super exciting. Um, this is my second quarter at UCLA. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I used to be a student ambassador for UC Berkeley's Underground Scholars. I was a student ambassador for two years, which is how I really got um, you know, in touch with USI, how I really got involved in the work that USI does. Um, I've met amazing people that you know are doing great things that have been so supportive throughout my academic journey. Um, I really wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Um, and just a little bit about myself also, I am you know, formerly incarcerated. I got incarcerated when I was 12 years old um, and I was in the juvenile justice system until right before I hit 16 years old. And just being in that environment really pushed me to you know, want to make a difference in my community, especially like for the youth and, you know, for adults as well that, you know, are misguided or, you know, getting played by the system, of course. Um, So I started getting involved with policy advocacy when I was in community college. Um, I testified on SB 716, which is a bill that, um, pretty much brings higher education to the juvenile hall. So if there's any students in there that graduated and have their GED or high school diploma, there has to be community college courses offered to them if they still have more time in there, which is, you know, absolutely amazing and absolutely necessary for them to have. So they can, you know, break that school to prison pipeline and, you know, re-envision their futures to know that there's so much more out there than, you know, just four walls and a door. Um, so definitely a lot of the work that I do today stems from my own incarceration, of course. Um, but I am very grateful to be here, like I said, and, you know, I'm really happy with everyone that I've met that has helped me make a difference in my community and make a difference to the youth and, you know, to everyone that is also system impacted. Dang, I love it. Jacqueline, you'd be dropping all this like resume droppers right here. By all (laughs) means, do your thing. Um, so. so folks who are hearing right now, this is the first time I'm actually getting a chance to meet our USI member, uh, Jacqueline. Uh, it's, it's, virtual times are rough, folks. Like, it's hard to interact with people, like Zoom fatigue and all that. Like, I'm pretty sure everyone out here be buying blue glasses by now because they'd be hurting everyone's eyes. Yes, seriously. And I, I feel like after a while, you're just like, geez, like, You just want to close your eyes and take a quick nap. (laughs) (laughs) How has um, this virtual setting, because you started your first year at UCLA virtually, you transferred to UCLA fall quarter where everything was online. Like how was it hard or, you know, what's difficult, what challenged you or what was easy for you to like connect with USI members or just like tap into resources? Definitely. So I started my virtual journey, academic journey, if you must, um, my last semester at College of San Mateo, which freaking 
sucked uh, because it's like, I worked so freaking hard at community college. I did so much. I, like I said, I got locked up when I was 12. The last technically grade I attended was sixth grade. I never graduated middle school. I don't have a GD or a high school diploma. I went straight to community college. I never got a chance to graduate. So um, it sucked. I mean, it was literally going to be my first graduation since fifth grade. So the fact that I didn't get that chance was, you know, super messed up and it, it's a slap in the face to the first generation college students. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. I had to adjust. Um, I finished off, you know, in community college online. It wasn't too bad um, for me personally, just because my last semester, I had done so much work in my other semesters. I only took seven units. So my professors were super laid back about the whole Zoom thing. It was so new. We were barely on lockdown. But moving into UCLA um, virtually was a bit of a challenge just because um, I was getting adjusted to CCLE, to my UCLA. Um, and on top of that, I had to get adjusted to, you know, logging in on the Zooms, um, asking questions through the chat. And making sure like some professors required to have your camera on uh, to get participation points was sometimes sucks for me. I mean, I'm a parenting student and I don't like having my kids on camera. Sometimes my kids come in the room and I want to turn it off and I don't want to lose participation points because of it. Um, so I think the most important thing to do is communicate with your professors. Um, I send them emails all the time. Like if you ever see my camera turned off, you know, this is the reason why. Um, if there's any other way I could make up for it, please let me know. Um, so I definitely think that was a huge part of me so far being virtual, um, to, you know, communicate with your professors for sure. Um, and as far as like, you know, getting in contact with underground scholars and stuff, um, virtually, I find the group me's to be very, very efficient for sure. Um, it's a, a lot of us, we all have great resources we pass around to each other. Um, we all help each other in so many different ways. Um, if someone posts something specific that I wanna, you know, have them elaborate, I send them a DM. Um, and even though being virtual sucks, I feel like sometimes it's also convenient at the same time. Um, I feel like, you know, if you if you don't live on campus, if there's an event or something like that, you got to rush to go to the event. There's traffic, there's this, there's parking, there's this. But, you know, one of the kind of upsides of doing this virtually is that there's more flexibility um, with your schedule. I mean, you can literally have meetings back to back and not have to worry about walking to the across campus or, you know, laying it out that way. Um, so in that sense, I feel like it could be very convenient. Um, but I'm a very, very, very social person. <laughs> so not being able to chop it up with someone face to face or, you know, go grab a coffee and do some homework on campus. It, it sucks. But I definitely feel like, you know, if you're willing to put in the effort and reach out to folks, send those extra emails, send those extra chats, um, it'll really make a huge difference. I do appreciate, you know, you taking the time to like go on your way out and private messaging folks and just asking more questions because it's like, you know, also a part of it, like feeling community. Um, but what would you tell for folks who are kind of like, you know, afraid of asking, tapping into resources, or not sure where to start, you get me? Like, what what would you tell them? Because, you know, there's some folks who might not be like, oh, like, let me look into this, or I just have a lot of things going on. Like, it's hard for me to access resources. Definitely, yeah. So for me, um, I definitely understand, like, having so much going on, or sometimes even, you know, there's $10,000 scholarship. All right, for sure, you click on the link, oh, damn, this is going to take me hella long to fill out. You know what I mean? So it does get overwhelming for sure. But I definitely feel like just picking and choosing what's the most important thing for you and what's um, going to benefit you the most at the end of the day. Um, I definitely feel like sometimes you can get a little more intimidated or you might feel like, damn, like this is a stupid question or damn, I should already know this by now. Nothing is ever a stupid question I feel like you might have a question I'm pretty sure five more other people have that same question but they might be shy just like you so if it's never asked it's never going to be answered so I feel like just sometimes really forcing yourself to step out of your comfort zone will do you so much good in life um, especially when you're looking for resources because 
everyone knows someone that has an answer to your question. If they personally don't, they will refer you to someone that don't. If they don't, they will refer you to someone else they know. So I feel like if you don't give yourself the chance to really step up and like, you know, make that effort, um, it's only going to harm you at the end of the day. And I always tell people like, especially if you're emailing and sending a group, like a group message or some, even a DM, it's like, I feel like that's kind of the easiest way to go about it sometimes because you're not looking at them face to face. You don't have to really interact with them. You can really say whatever you want in that email and send it and call it a day kind of. Um, so I feel like, um, in that sense, like, you know, say what you got to say, you know, um, at the end of the day, everyone's just there to help you. And I feel like worst case scenario is they say no, um, which a lot of the times I haven't really heard a lot of no's. Um, I get a lot of, I don't know the answer to your question. Let me refer you to someone else. Or when I really get to that person, if it's for sure a no, I did everything I could. It is what it is. Um, but I know if I would have stayed quiet, a lot of times I wouldn't have got half the scholarships I got. I wouldn't have half the grants that I got or just any resources at all. Even, um, seeking like, um, mental health, for example, um, you know, for myself, I reach out to someone, Hey, do you know of any, you know, therapist, anyone that can help me? Oh yeah. Reach out to caps at UCLA, you know, they'll refer you to this person. So I feel like just, like I said, stepping out of your comfort zone and just making that extra effort, um, will do you so good. Um, you know, there's never a dumb question and someone always is ready to give you the answer to your question for sure. No, that was, I felt that I think a lot of folks, um, understand that for sure. Um, I want to kind of transition to this question as in, you know, just for our formerly incarcerated system impacted or just formerly incarcerated brothers and sisters that are out there. What would some advice be for you to give them? Let's say they're at community college right now or thinking about going to two year, four years, like what's some sort of motivation you will give them, you get me? Or something someone, someone will tell you about just like school, you know, like what if at one point of, um, someone's like, you know, I'm done with this, like, I'm not meant for school, or like, I feel like one repeating um, thing I hear a lot is just like, you know, where I, where I see someone who looks like me, like, imposter syndrome kicks in, and all that, like, because it's, man, there's one thing that someone else brought up was, like, you're in academia, right, you get along with your academia friends, but they don't know your personal life, and then folks with your personal life don't understand your academia, like, how do you balance that? Definitely. Yeah. So personally, for me, when I was in community college, it was immediate imposter syndrome. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't have a GD or a high school diploma. Um, so when I went into community college, I was like, I'm not the smartest person here. Um, I probably shouldn't be here. I don't have a GD or a high school diploma. Like sometimes I'll be like, dude, I'm like not smart enough to be here. Like, what the hell am I even doing? But at the end of the day, I mean, personally, for me, my kids are a huge motivation. Um, I think about them and I think about as in, okay, what am I going to preach to my kids? Obviously, go to school, get an education. Learning is the best thing you can do for yourself. And I truly stand by that. Um, to be a role model for my kids, yes, but because I owe it to myself to gain this knowledge. I mean, this knowledge is not just for, you know, average folks or just regular kids that go to high school with not a lot of struggles. You know what I mean? Education is, should be accessible to absolutely everybody. And I learned this a lot going and volunteering at the same juvenile hall that I was incarcerated at. So I would go, um, even the staff is there that used to take care of me. It's crazy. <laughs> um, and I go in there and I, I speak to the youth and I'm like, Hey, like, what's your next step when you get out of here? And you don't hear a lot like, oh, I want to go to college. And I ask them, you know, what about college? Oh, it's too expensive. Oh, I can't afford it. Oh, I'm not smart enough to go. And I feel that. I mean, I've been there. I, you know, sometimes I still feel that like I'm not smart, as smart as these people or whatever it is, even being at UCLA now. Um, so I feel like while I was in community college, um, just, you know, really reaching out to programs and folks that I know I can relate to. So we had a formerly incarcerated club at my community college. And as soon as I went in there, I saw someone I was actually incarcerated with. Nice. And, and that was such a powerful experience, like one of the most powerful experiences throughout my community college journey, because I was like, damn, 
Like I was having so many doubts while I was there. Like, dude, this was a mistake. Why even, even I was, even though I was getting straight A's, I was still putting myself down. And I feel like that's just, you know, it comes from trauma. It comes from everything we were told in life. My mom didn't really, really push on me to go to school more. So go get a job and provide for yourself. Um, so even though, like I said, I was getting good grades, I still felt like I didn't belong. Um, at one point, I just completely wanted to drop out. I had a four month old at home. I had a three year old. Um, I was so overwhelmed, but I kind of just kept, you know, reminding myself of my long term goals and reminding myself that nothing comes easy. I mean, hard work pays off and, you know, everything great comes with a struggle and you know you just got to really push for it and if you really want it you can literally achieve anything you set your mind to as corny as that sounds it's straight facts like if you don't put in that effort and you don't put in that 100 percent, and if let's say you end up you know i guess failing in a sense like it's not really failing but just i always say put in your 100 percent in everything you do and if something doesn't go your way you know that you did everything you possibly could and you can walk away feeling okay about it mm-hmm. uh, but if you don't put in that 100 percent, and if you don't give yourself the opportunity for that then you know i feel like you will always kind of live with regret um and i feel like just reminding yourself that you belong to be there just like everybody else and just you know stay focused on your long term goal that would definitely help you get to where you want to be and of course like i said and i can never stress it enough nothing in life comes easy um you know everything is a sacrifice and everything great comes with sacrifices so always always keep that in mind During the last month, our community have been vigorously discussing and taking steps to make sure that our schools are eliminating barriers and providing the support and opportunities that will ensure the empowerment and success of students of color and other marginalized groups. We are here sharing this statement to acknowledge our brothers and sisters who are currently incarcerated. We also want to acknowledge our formerly incarcerated brothers and sisters who have not yet shared their stories. We're hoping to elevate our Black Indigenous people of color, formerly incarcerated students hustle. So, interested in collaborating, having general questions, please feel free to reach out our program's email at undergroundscholars at s-a-o-n-e-t dot u-c-l-a dot e-d-u. That's all for now, folks. But I'll see you in the next episode of Underground Scholars.